So scheduled to appear for Texas will be head coach Vic Schaefer, along with student athletes Madison Booker, Shay Holly, and Aaliyah Moore. Scheduled to appear for NC State, head coach Wes Moore, along with student athletes Isaiah James and River Baldwin. Uh, I do have the all tournament team uh, to announce, and I believe there will, it will be emailed out at some point. Uh, the all tournament team is uh, Kiki Iriafin of Stanford, Shia Rivers of NC State, Aaliyah Moore of Texas, Shay Holly of Texas, and the most outstanding player, Isaiah James of NC State.
Thankfully, we're still waiting for uh, Texas to confirm that they're on their way. Reminder of our uh, press conference flow, uh, first two minutes will be an opening statement from the head coach, followed by eight minutes of questions for the student athletes. And we'll follow that with uh, 10, 10 more minutes of questions for the head coach. And we'll give our standard reminders, please silence all cell phones. No flash photography, no live video inside the press conference area. If you want to access the press conference video, you can do so for the NCAA Media Hub. We'll take questions from the media room first, followed by anyone on Zoom. We'll ask that you please state your name and affiliation and who you're directing your question towards before you ask your question. And hopefully we'll be started here momentarily.
Texas taking the 76-66 loss to NC State in the regional final. Joining us now in the postgame press conference, head coach Vic Schaefer, along with student athletes Madison Booker, Shea Holly, and Aaliyah Moore. Uh, coach, we'll go ahead and open with a uh, statement, and then we'll direct questions to student athletes. Yeah, well, uh, just first, just want to congratulate Wes and his program and their team. I thought they were really special today. Um, they played really well. Uh, obviously, um, James really played well that first half and uh, was ready to go. But I thought their whole group really played well. And, um, you know, for us, um, you know, we're going to give God the glory and victory. And we're going to give him the glory and defeat. It just it wasn't our day. Um, we out-rebounded them, uh, 14 on the offensive boards, 13 overall. We got 20 more shots than they got. Um, we just – the first half we really struggled guarding, you know, defensively. And uh, but, man, I'm we're all disappointed. I mean, that locker room is no fun. It's rough. But as I told Shay, coming off the floor, like this group has done so much, has accomplished so much. I will not let them or anyone take away from what they've been able to do this season um, with the things that have happened. Like, this group's amazing. It wasn't our day. We didn't, you know, we, we, we take great pride in being, you know, tough. And tough doesn't have anything to do with how much weight you can lift. Today, we probably weren't as tough as we've been in the past over the last two months. But again, it's, it's not like we woke up and went, and hey, we're not gonna be tough today. Um, it just it happens sometimes in athletics, um, but those kids, these kids played their heart out today, and again, maybe didn't play well. You give our give, give our opponent credit for that a little bit, and then um, again, sometimes these things happen. You know, it's probably the worst we've played all what two months. I mean, we just man, we smoked a lot of really good looks in the first half. We didn't guard, if, if we don't change that and we make three shots, it's 43-39 instead of 31. And, and you can go down the list of how many really good looks we had, who had them, and all that. So sometimes, I don't know why, it's just not in the cards. Um, and I don't, I, I don't think, again, when you look at 20 more shots, I mean, they outshot us at the free throw line, 25 to 11, um, you know, and, 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 but we outscored them in the paint, 44 to 24, um, outscored them in the second half. But we just, we got popped early, didn't really handle that well. Again, probably could have easily been a four-point game, two-point game at half. But, and this group is, just because they dropped one today, doesn't make them any less special doesn't make them any less remarkable, doesn't make them any less of who they've been all year long. Shaylee Gonzalez should be up here. She's the most incredible um, young lady. What she's brought to our program, the impact, the presence that she has, so far reaching and everlasting. Been here two short years. Like, I can't believe she's already been here two years and she's not going to be back next year. Would love to have had her for all six, Grandma. But just, you know, we don't win without her. We don't win without all these kids. Shea Holly had to go from being our third defender on the perimeter, being number one, and just welcomed it with open arms and did it. So we've had a lot of kids step up. Tonight wasn't our night. Give North Carolina State credit. But it doesn't make it any less of the season that we've had today. And it doesn't make these young ladies any less of the competitors they've been throughout the course of the season or any less of the champion that they are. These kids are truly champions. Go ahead and open it now, now for questions to the student athletes. We'll start in back. Uh, Manny Ramirez with the Daily Texan. Madison, this is your first time reaching the Elite Eight. It is your freshman year. Just, you know, your feelings on being here and, and how you use this to, for motivation going into the next season. 
Um, yeah, it's my first one. Uh, it's been a long season. Like, you know, I got here, um, you know, workouts are going great. You know, we look like a Final Four team. We believe that we'll get to the Final Four. And then, you know, things happen. People have injuries. And, you know, all the whole, like, hope, like, basically just like everybody, just mind change, you know, just like the outside, not ours, you know, people go down. And, you know, they say they're not winning Big 12 in our regular season. They're not winning this many games. They're not making to the Final Four. They're not making this far. They're not a one seed. And, you know, just the fight we have, you know, we had to get here. Um, we kept fighting. We kept fighting the odds. And we made people believe. And, you know, I think this is my, you know, like this is my first season. You know, it didn't go the way I wanted. But I think it's a lot to learn from this season also. Um, I'm just grateful to be here, blessed. My teammates, are, like, they're the best. Um, you know, it don't feel good, but it'll definitely push me in the future. Go ahead. <coughs> um, Danny Davis, the Austin American Statesman. Shay, what made um, Asia so tough to defend today? Um, obviously, she was making shots. She's really good off the bounce, so, you know, it wasn't like you could give her one thing. You know, she couldn't find a way to score the other way. But, um, yeah, I think it maybe took me too long to adjust. We did a better job with her in the second half just as a team. But, yeah, the first half, I mean, she's a really good, talented player, um, can score at all three levels, so. Um, Manny Ramirez from the Daily Texan. Aliyah. Your play earned you a spot on the all-tournament team. Um, I just kind of wanted to ask you just how you're feeling right now, um, the emotions kind of that you're going through, and just um, what it's like to have your play recognized to, for the all-tournament team. Um, that's great. We didn't, we didn't win, though. That was the overall goal coming into this tournament. I hard was here my freshman year it, it's I, 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 I don't have much to say it's just it's 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 hard because I saw the work that this team put in the work that I've put in um, and it's great I got that accolade but we had goals um, and I'm really proud of us I don't want to take away that we got to the elite eight but we had we had goals beyond that um, and I, I saw us doing it, so just, it's tough. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Man, I'm just from the Daily Texan. Shay, you have a lot of emotion on your face right now. Can you just talk about what it's like playing with your, your duo partner in, in Shay Lee and, and um, the season that you guys have had <coughs> together, just kind of being that dynamic duo up front? Yeah, um, Shaylee's super special. Definitely part of the reason I'm upset. Um, she just puts in a lot of hard work, and me and her get shots up every day together. Sorry. So, we'll definitely miss her, but um, yeah, I'm super proud of her. I know she has a lot of great things ahead. Um, it's not like her story stops here at all. We're super blessed to have had her the past two years. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's an amazing person more than anything, and I know God has a lot of great things in store for her, so I'm excited for her in that uh, way. But yeah, definitely gonna miss her. Um, Grace Rayner with The Athletic. For any of you three, um, just before halftime, the NCAA announced the two three-point lines were not the same. Did you guys notice that? Um, and I guess what-, what They were not aware. They were not aware, no. okay. We have time for one last question for our student athletes. We'll go to Lindsay. <coughs> Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Shay, I just wondered, um, with what Isaiah did today, did you were you surprised? Did she remind you of anyone that you had played against previously, or was she just unconscious? Um, I I won't say she's unconscious. It was unconscious because she's a really good player and she's super talented. So. Um, she definitely played very well, but um, good players play well in big games, and she did that. Um, 
so I don't want to take away from anything. It's not like she played out of her mind, I wouldn't say, because she's more than capable. Um, she played great the game before this, and uh, we got to watch that game. I mean, it was definitely a, a good game for her, I would say. Um, but, yeah, she's just a really talented player. So, To our student-athletes, we thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on a great season. Floor is now open to questions for Coach Schaefer. Start with Lindsay. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Vic, can you talk to us about the three-point line that you were told before the game, and did it matter if it had been right? Would do you think that maybe Isaiah James wouldn't have hit all those threes? None of us know what the actual measurements were. Maybe you do and could share with us. Yeah, I. Uh... I was notified, I don't know, I think my kids were warming up that there was a discrepancy and, um, and so I think, I think it's about a foot from one end to the other. But they gave us the option of bringing somebody in and remarking it correctly, which would have taken an hour and we might have lost our window with ABC or playing how it was. Wes wanted to play and we played. I mean, I wasn't going to be the guy that goes, no, I don't want to do it. So, um, you know, I don't really, you want to know if I think it had anything to do with the game? Probably not. But I really would have loved to have done what I normally do my last 12 minutes before a game instead of walking around out there trying to see if the floor's screwed up. Vic, why, why did you not want to take the delay to get it right? Well, our kids had, had already warmed up. It would have been a minimum hour because they were going to have to bring somebody in from outside and the potential of losing our window on ABC. Um, Danny, if I would have done it, I'd have been the only one in the room that wanted to do it. And, uh, again, at the end of the day, when we went out there and analyzed it, it just – at the end of the day, we'd already played a game on it, and we both won, and um, so we just decided to play. Come back first. Matt Armidas from the Daily Texan. Coach, a lot to be desired at the end of this one. Just can you talk about um, what makes this team so special, um, even when it ends here in the Elite Eight? Well, I mean, anybody that's been around and, and – uh, seen teams and how they develop and the players that are on those teams and what their skill sets are and capabilities, their, their uh, ability to play the game and their investment. Um, you know, when I watched this team grow over the last three months, the investment that they put into the game is probably number one uh, because they had to. Uh, you know, we, we've been hit, hit, we've been behind the eight ball a lot this year. With, with Rory, then Taylor, well, let me start over, with Deanna, then Rory, then Taylor, then Deanna again, um, then Booker for a game. So we just, you know, this, this group's been so resilient. Um, and, and so on a day when our toughness wasn't quite what it's been, um, you just can't let one day define you. like. One day doesn't define this team. Everything they've been, they would, I think somebody told me that it hadn't been, they haven't won 33 games at Texas since 1987-88. And you think about all the history and the tradition of Texas women's basketball and, and all that, and this team did something that hasn't been done in 40 years? Come on. And did it with, under some really challenging um, situations. So we'll be back. I can say that with great confidence. If, if we lose Shaley and Hattie, the class that we have coming in, Rory back healthy, and everybody else a year older and a year wiser, I'll be sitting here next March 31st. Is that what today is? There you go. I mean, 
I always say, if I'm doing my job, I'm playing to April. I almost got there. But if you know anything about this group, anything about this team, those kids are so special, man. They're some of the best kids I've ever been around in my life. So it's been, I'm heartbroken for them because I wanted them to experience, you know, going to the Final Four, playing in that game. But at the same time, I couldn't be prouder of a group. Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Um, forgive me for my ignorance on this one, but which three-point line was correct? Like, which, which end was wrong? Come on, Grace. Uh, <laughs> shit, that was about two and a half or three hours ago and some crying in between, so I'm not sure I can remember. Ah, shoot, Grace, I don't know. I can tell you this. Go out there and get up in the stands and look at it, and you can see it. Alexa. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Yeah. If I could, Alexa Philp at ESPN, was it one that was too short or one that was too long? Do you remember that? I, I, I think Coach already said he doesn't remember, so we okay. can move on to the next one. I did question. have another question, if I could actually ask that one too. Um, with, Isaiah James, with Isaiah James going off the way she did, did you think that was more of a defensive breakdown or just a player that was on a heater? Hey, you go back and look at the film. Shea Holly's standing right there looking at her a bunch, you know. I mean, okay, we could turn nine threes into nine twos, and that cuts it to nine, but she's going to get by you. You know, she's just so quick and athletic. Their athleticism and length at guard was a real concern going in. First thing on the board was, on the defensive side, was transition defense. We had 16 points we gave up at halftime. They didn't get any the second half. That was number one. Number two was dribble penetration. So to me, that was the two things that we really had pinpointed and talked about. And we just had a hard time getting, you know, handling it. But, you know, we, it, it, it just happens that way. And, and again, I, I, man, Shea Holly's been nothing short of spectacular this year for me. So uh, I think the kid was, she's a really good player, and today she was outstanding. You got to pat her on the back. You know, we talk about it all the time. Sometimes you just got to pat them on the butt and tell them I'll see you the next time down. That's what we had to do with her because she made some really tough shots. Kevin? Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. The, the way you jumped in, it seems like it was a choice not to tell the players about the three-point line. Did you kind of not want that to be in their heads? Yeah, no, I mean, there's no point in talking about it. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it was, um, like I said, it's, you guys are going to make a big deal out of it. I, again, I don't, it's a shame, but it is what it is. And I just, I don't think anybody wanted to, draw attention to it and put the thing off for an hour, you know? I mean, I just, and at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know that it, it mattered. Brenna? Brenna Green, Coin6 here in Portland. Um, is it disappointing at all to you that we're having to spend half your press conference right now talking about a three-point line instead of talking about your team? Well, I hate to say this, but I have a lot of colleagues that would say only in women's basketball. I mean, it's, it's a shame, really, that it even happened. But it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm not the culprit here. You guys are asking me about something that I had no control over. So Vic Schaefer ain't the problem. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. So it, it just, it's a shame. That's all I can say. I'll be like, I'd be glad to talk about my team, though. I'm really proud of them. Yeah, Danny. Unfortunately, you're up there instead of an NCAA rep, but um, how limited was Taylor today and um, what was kind of her status today as far as? Yeah, I mean, she was cleared, obviously, and, um, you know, uh, played well for her 10 minutes that she played and uh, certainly made an impact. Would like to have probably played her a little more. Um, but, um, you know, when I played her the first half, she missed a hedge and gave up a driving layup. and. Um, she had a much better second time through, so she was completely, obviously, our people did a, are going to be very thorough, and she was completely cleared, so. This will need to be our last question. Um, Bella Munson with the next. You got some really good minutes from your sophomore, um, Montanda. I'm sorry if I'm 
say yeah. not, not Moin and Tonda. Moin and Tonda. Um, she came in, gave really good offensive minutes, got really big boards. Can you just speak about sort of the boost she gave your team off the bench today? Yeah, I'm proud of her. You know, she didn't uh, came up. She came off the bench the other night and didn't play very well, and she knew it, and it upsets her. She kid wants to please so bad, and uh, I want her to be. You know, I want her to be uh, great. I mean, I think the kid that can be, but you know. Uh, Seemed like Friday night she couldn't get out of her own way. Tonight she played well. And I uh, think she's really comfortable in certain things that we do, like when we're playing zone. She's really good at the top of the zone and um, takes up a lot of room and space. And um, she just was different tonight, which I'm, I'm really thrilled for her. Cause she's a great kid, man. Like, she's a great kid. Mom played at, uh, what played for Wendy Larry. Um, and... Uh, and so she's, she comes from, from a, a really good family and, and basketball family. And so um, was happy for her to see her come in and, and be able to help us a little bit. So, you know, again, we, we missed a ton of shots, y'all. I and mean, we missed some point blank shots. Sometimes that happens. And it hadn't happened to us all year, but tonight it happened. But sometimes it happens on that stage, right? Especially when you, you've got some, some uh, kids that maybe haven't been there. And uh, so, again, um, before I go, I just want to thank everybody for being here. And, and I want to thank everybody for what you mean to our game. Um, you know, I've, I've done this a long time. I've seen some of y'all, y'all weren't even around when I first started coaching. And that's a good thing. But the, the end of the day, to have y'all here covering our game and promoting our game and caring about our game, um, means so much. And um, for me, for somebody who's literally invested my life in this game, I want you to know how much it's appreciated. Our student athletes appreciate you. My administration appreciates you. And I can tell you, as the head coach at the University of Texas, I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, you just keep telling the good stories. And hopefully we won't give you too many bad ones. But um, we get it. Sometimes the good comes with the bad. But, you know, I. It's one of the things I'm proud about this group, y'all. You're never gonna write anything bad about them. You're never gonna write anything about their character. These kids are, they're great Longhorns and they're incredible competitors and they do it the right way. And that's how I can sit up here today with a smile on my face, even though I just got beat and be so proud of them because I know they did everything they could today, yesterday, the day before, to get to this point, trust me, this was not easy. And just like I told y'all, Apollo 13, rewiring the capsule to get them home, it's a, it was a challenge. But I'm gonna tell you, I think we got them home. And that was our goal. And we'll be back. Thank y'all. Praise the Lord and hook them horns. Thank y'all.
Once again, NC State with the 76-66 win over Texas. Joining us in the regional championship post-game press conference, head coach Wes Moore, along with student athletes River Baldwin and the most outstanding player of the tournament, Isaiah James. Coach, congratulations on the win and the, uh, advancing to the Final Four. Begin with your opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions for the student athletes. Well, I'm just so proud of these young ladies. Again, we, uh, you know, it's a long season. We had a little stretch. February, we lost a couple of road games, and uh, I think everybody thought we were going to fall apart or whatever. And uh, these players just uh, kept working, uh, stuck together. I mean, they're such a – the chemistry so good. They really, you know, pull for each other. And uh, when you get in a situation like this, that really pays off. And I would like to also say, can, you know, congrats to Coach Schaefer and his team to lose a player – like he did with Harmon, at, uh, their point guard early in the year, and to still make it this deep in the tournament says a lot about uh, Vic and his players. So, but like I said, couldn't be prouder of this group. We've had somebody step up. Seems like every game, different people. Isaiah stepped up big time in both these games, and uh, of course River's been a rock in there for us all year. So proud of both of these players. We'll open the floor now to questions from our student athletes. Start with Lindsay and then Sabrina. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Okay, first of all, as I did you know about the three point line discrepancy thing? Um, no, we were just there to play our game. That's it. Okay, so given how well you shot, would it have mattered where the three point line was? <laughs> uh, today? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> they don't shoot at that thing anyway, so it don't matter. I tell them to move in every day. <laughs> Sabrina. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, River, a pretty good one-day delayed birthday present. Um, <laughs> how are you able to just sort of bring your team home in the fourth quarter when they really zoned in on Isaiah? I mean, yeah, I was super frustrated in the first half when they called that second foul in the first quarter. So having to sit for so long, I mean, just knowing that my team needed me in the second half to close out the game and just being that inside presence whenever they shut down the perimeter. Um, but yeah, you can't guard all five of us when we all average double figures. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Ernie Myers, Wolfpack Sports Radio. This question is for uh, Isaiah James. I saw you in an interview on, uh, on, uh, online, and a woman asked you, you shot well against uh, you know, Stanford. Can you do it again? Yes. And you, without hesitation, said yes. Uh, where do you get that confidence from in your shot? Um, it's like you've been playing in this gym before. <laughs> you know, just I just keep my head up. You know, you never know what what can happen. And I just I just kept going. My confidence was going in as the shots was going in. So later in the game, you know, they just kept hitting for me. So I just kept shooting. <laughs> uh, Lindsey Chanel, USA Today. As I had to follow up on that. So, I mean, are you shooting and you're thinking like, dang, give me the ball. I cannot miss. Have you mm -hmm. shot that well before? ever in your life like I mean you were perfect from three f in the first half yeah I shot I shot well but I, I won't say give me the ball because all my teammates can score you know I just wait to I just allow the game to come to me and you know it did well for me Alexa Alexa Philpoo ESPN what does it mean for both of you to get this program back to a level that it hasn't been since I mean were you guys born when it Last went to the final no, four. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what does it mean for you to be part of that history? I think it's just an honor to be part of a legacy that is NC State women's basketball. I mean, I didn't start here, but I feel like I've been here my whole career. And um, I really found a home here. So to be a part of the first final four for Coach Moore, I, I thank him for taking a chance on me and taking me into this program. And um, I've loved every second of it. Definitely. It means a lot to me as well. I wouldn't pick any other coach to play with. You know, it's been 26 years. <laughs> it's been 26 years since the Wolfpack brought it home, so it's good to light it up for, uh, light it up for Hillsboro. Well, Kevin, and then we've got two questions in the Zoom room. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Uh, Vic Schaefer just was in here and told us the transition defense was at the top of their whiteboard coming into this game. How were you and, and Sanaya able to create so much out of transition against them trying to take that away? You know, we're, we're unstoppable when it comes to transition, as Coach Moore says. Um, so that was our go-to every time, and it, it was just working good for us. Okay, we'll go to the Zoom room. Uh, Brian Pirtle, go ahead, please. 
Hey, it's uh, Brian Pirtle with Pack Pride. You were a freshman on this program two years ago. We all came just this close. You can't you can't see it, but I got the two fingers were close together. Just that so so close to the Final Four. What does it mean? Two years two years removed now after the discord from last year, y'all are in the final four. Y'all you got over that. What does it mean to be a part of that? You know, it feels so good to be a part of that since my freshman year. You know, it just shows a lot about the Wolfpack. It just shows a lot about myself, you know, just never giving up. Um, you know, people didn't know my name my freshman year, but you know my name now, so you see how I've grown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the Zoom room. Ethan McDowell, go ahead. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Um, River, I was just wondering when the foul calls maybe aren't necessarily going your way, What's the key to like staying ready and staying prepared so you can come in in the fourth quarter and make such a huge impact like you did today? I think whenever you get in early foul trouble like that, it's easy to check out. So just staying locked in mentally and knowing that when your time comes and you hit the court again, you need to step up for your teammates and not be caught up in whatever's going on in your own head. Any other questions? Do we have? Oh, okay. We'll go back to the Zoom room. Uh, Ethan McDowell, and then we'll get to you, Tim. And then for both players, uh, I'm sure part of the reason you chose NC State was to play in games like this. Um, when you committed to NC State, and River obviously as a transfer and as I out of high school, is this a height you saw the program reaching while you were here? Definitely, I saw this program recent. The sky's the limit for this program. You know, we're gonna keep going. You know, uh, since high school they were doing good. So, you know, I felt like I could be a part of this program and make it better. So, yeah. Yeah, I think um, this is part of what I was trying to achieve entering the portal and just looking for a competitive program and um, just looking to play competitive basketball with teammates that support me and coaches that um, trust me. Tim. Uh, Tim Booth from the AP. River, you, Isaiah has obviously had a lot of big games for you guys this year. How would you describe what she was like, what she did for you guys this weekend, these two games that you had here? You know, I've seen a lot of growth in Zaza since um, even the beginning of the year. She's really stepped up as a leader, and we feed off of her energy. So just, um, just the growth in taking smart shots and being a reliable defender um, has been great to see throughout the season. And as you all saw this weekend, she is that girl. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the Zoom room, Brian Pirtle, go ahead. Hey, this is for either player. Uh, Cleveland is a little bit closer to Raleigh than Portland is. Just how much are you looking forward to see how much the fans can make, how many, more, how many fans can make that trip up to Cleveland for the final? Oh, we came all the way out here, and you see Wolf 5 fans came out here. So just imagine, just imagine what's, what's about to happen next. So. We just love the Wolfpack fans and how much love they show us. You know, it's our family, it's our friends. There is about to come. It's about to be big for us. Uh, Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. I thought this might be the last question I was just going to ask. Are you going to go back to the locker room immediately and turn on the men's game? <laughs> oh, sh for sure. We're rooting for our men's. Yes, we're definitely rooting for our men's. Absolutely. They're down yes. four right now. Hey, it's okay. We still got a lot of time left. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not the last question. <laughs> uh, this question, uh, Ernie Myers again, Wolfpack Sports Radio. It's for Whip River Baldwin. Uh, when you were at Florida State, you weren't a real scorer or what have you, and you expanded your game here. Uh, you were MVP in the uh, St. Thomas. You scored 26 points in that game. In the fourth quarter, you had 14 points. I mean, what drove you? I mean, I know that uh, Zaya found you a couple of times in the lane, but you, you hit the free throw jump shot. I mean, you, you just were. Tell me about that development from when you your offensive game. I think a lot of it just comes from having teammates that trust you and coaches that have confidence in you. and. Like, just feeding off of their energy, they've given me confidence in myself. Time for one last question. Alexa. Uh, Alexa Philp, ESPN, you guys were picked to finish eighth in the ACC. Now you're going to the final four. How does that feel? 
You know, it, it feels amazing. You know, people doubted us, and we, we, we didn't care what the media had to say. We didn't care what anybody had to say. We, you know, we, we showed up on the court every time, and we proved who we were. So, yeah, it means a lot. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and best of luck to the Final Four. But I want to shout out our scout team, too. They got us here, too. I just want to scout out. For sure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, the floor is now open to questions for Coach Moore. Yeah, go ahead, Sabrina. Yes. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, Coach, I can't really tell with your hat on, but you said Elvis might make an appearance today. Is they the didn't, they didn't get me bad today. Okay. But, <laughs> hey, I've been waiting a long time to put one of these on. I couldn't, I couldn't wait any longer. <laughs> uh, just, um, just what are your emotions right now? How proud are you of what you guys accomplished today? Yeah, just a flood of emotions and thoughts. Uh, you know, I think of Kay Yow, 34 years at NC State, and took this program to a Final Four in 98. I think of the players two years ago that were a double overtime game away from being in this same exact spot. So I think of them, and then I think of these players, uh, again, uh, you know, overcoming all the doubts and questions and just, you know, Final four, y'all. I mean, this is my 35th year as a head coach, and uh, it's amazing. You know, very emotional on Easter Sunday. Uh, unbelievable. Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. Uh, Wes, you have two kids uh, who were on the roster today that were on the roster two years ago. Isaiah is one of them but she didn't play in that game. And she right. said, you know, no one knew my name. Right. There's a lot of kids that go into the portal that get that don't want to wait. Just what was it like to watch her have yeah. this performance on this stage, yeah. knowing that she decided to stick around and believe in you and believe in this program? Yeah, that's a great point. It's it's just really hard. And, again, I get it. I mean, it's it's our job. But, you know, I'm used to kids coming in. It's a big jump from high school. These kids, freshmen, were playing high school ball, and now they're on this stage playing against players that will be in the WNBA next year. And it's a big jump. And you hope that they'll be patient because, you know, I, I notice all the teams, early in the year you're playing a lot of freshmen, and then when you get to this time of year, your roster, I mean, your depth has kind of shrunk down a little bit. Uh, your rotation, I guess I should say, is shrunk down. And it's hard on them. And you hope that they'll stick around. You know, they're going to be better a year from now. They're going to play more a year from now at your place. But they may decide, I don't, you know, I, I can't wait. I'm going to jump. And uh, so it is different. You know, I'm used to seeing kids develop. And Isaiah is an unbelievable example. You know, her freshman year, great player out of high school. I mean, big time player. But freshman year, kind of had to work her way in. Last year, she got more time. Probably should have got even more if I hadn't have been so, you know, adamant about playing veterans. And uh, now here she is reaping the benefits. And, yeah, it's really awesome. She's worked so hard over the summer. And like I said, her confidence, she was, you know, she used to maybe hang her head if things didn't go well, if a shot didn't go in. If I got on her, <laughs> uh, but you know, now she is a woman and she handles adversity and keeps coming back. Kevin? Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Coach, since you mentioned the doing this kind of for the 2022 players, or at least thinking of them, have you heard from any of them this week? Some of the former players, yeah, not, not so much from that team uh, here recently, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, We've got our GA was on that team, Kayla Jones, great player. Same thing, her freshman year she didn't play much. Heck, her sophomore year she probably didn't play a ton. And then she ended up starting for us three years and being on that team that went to the Elite Eight. She got drafted. Uh, but now answering your question, uh, this time of year, I'm not real good at communicating. <laughs> uh, my sisters are probably wondering why I'm not answering. Uh, but you're just so engulfed in. You win one, you get ready for the next one. And uh, such a challenge. So when, uh, when the dust settles, we'll have plenty of time to maybe savor it a little bit more with people you care about. Go to the Zoom room now. Ethan McDowell, go ahead. 
Hey, Coach Ethan McDowell from the Wolf Packer. Uh, early this season, you said a couple of times something to the effect of um, we're going to need the freshmen to step up with um, depth and all that. Uh, you know, Zoe obviously played a ton today. Maddie played a little bit. Just overall, with the entire bench, how proud of you? How proud of them are you of how they bought into their roles this yeah. season? And yeah, like I said, it's tough on freshmen. Really, our depth was uh, with our freshman class. And uh, so, again, when you get in this situation, sometimes you go with the veterans that have been there a little bit more. Uh, but, yeah, they've kept great attitudes. Like I said, they, they really cheer for each other, pull for each other, happy for each other when they have success. And uh, that's pretty uh, remarkable trait to have. And uh, it's made it work. You know, if they were totally into themselves and upset with their role, uh, we wouldn't be here right now. And again, we're, we're excited about that class and hopefully they're going to grow with us and uh, keep, this, keep this tradition going like Isaiah did. Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Uh, with the three-point line situation, which one was correct? And <laughs> have the lines been painted like this all week? Yeah, I mean, I don't mind now. I mean, it's again, uh, <laughs> you know, we were uh, – the, the line on – the Texas benches in was correct. The line on our end was probably a little bit short. And at first, you know, Vic was hesitant about it, and then he finally said, you know, you know, I, I didn't want to wait an hour or something to play the game. I was ready to get going. Uh, but, you know, Vic probably figured out, you know what, this line down here is what we're used to. That line down there isn't. But, uh, and if you'll look, I think we shot the ball better on the other end, both games, because that's the normal line. But I'm not going to blame it on that. I mean, uh, these kids, like I said, they shoot so far behind it sometimes nowadays. Who knows where the line is? So, um, you know, it is a, an unusual situation. But, um, like I said, I don't know that it was an advantage or disadvantage either way. We both played a half on each end. I'm sorry, what? To you, sorry. Yeah. To your knowledge, has, have they been painted like this this entire time we've, we've been here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't paint them overnight. <laughs> okay, we'll go to the Zoom room. J.B. Ricks, go ahead, please. We'll see. Hey, how you doing, Coach? J.B. Ricks here from Spectrum News One. Um, I was there with you in 2022 um, in that regional final in Connecticut, and just the disappointment that – you know, the entire program and everyone felt at that time. You have to tell me how good it feels to be in this position now, you uh, know, in contrast to where you were two years ago um, yeah. in that regional final. Yeah, when you lose a game in double overtime as a coach, uh, you second guess everything you did for that 50 minutes of that game. And you look back and think, if I just would have done this, we'd have gone to the final four. And I didn't know if I'd ever get another chance, you know. I know I'm fairly young, but, uh, you know, uh, it's tough to get there. I mean, and so uh, it's just amazing, you know, really is. I mean, that's your goal. That's every player's goal, every coach's goal uh, when they start their career, when they start every season is to ultimately get to, get to the Final Four. So, um, and I don't think we'll be satisfied. I think we'll still be hungry. Uh, but, you know, we're going to really enjoy this plane ride home. So, it's good. Whatever y'all want to do. I'm fine. As far, I mean, I don't think we're going anywhere for a okay. while. Our flight's not till 6. Okay. So. We're going to go back to the Zoom room first. Ethan McDowell, go ahead. Coach, for every game of this tournament, um, your team is getting out to these leads and then kind of just maintaining them throughout the entire second half, it really seems. Um, in your opinion, what is the team doing well to respond to runs from opponents in you know, the fourth quarter and um, really not let the game get too close at the end? Yeah, yeah, you know, I knew Texas was gonna make some runs and uh, obviously they uh, whittled it down there some. Uh, but I, you know, again, when you've got guards that you know, can handle it, can get downhill and attack, uh, it makes it really hard to, you know, for people to try to pressure you and catch up. You know, I, I noticed they didn't really press us as much as they normally do, and I think that says a lot about our guards, and they just felt like 
they didn't want to speed us up uh, even more. So, um, but yeah, I mean, again, uh, <laughs> both these games, you know, um, obviously the Stanford game, we were down 10 at halftime. This game, they made a run in the second half. Uh, but these kids just like to play. And uh, hopefully we can continue to, you know, take care of the ball. I think we've done a better job of that. And when you do that, it's hard for people to make runs. Go Alexa, then Lindsay, then Tim. Alexa Philpoo, ESPN. Wes, what do you think has led to Isaiah playing her best basketball at this moment in the stage, you know, in this point in her career? Heck if I know. I wish I had <laughs> bottled it up sooner. But, no, I mean, I think, again, her confidence is just like a coming out party. I think she – you know, right now, the, probably the goal looks a little bigger, and and obviously we're going to her. I think all these players, you know, I think, you know, River over in the Virgin Islands, you know, I mean, we told her, you're it. We're going to get you the ball. We're going to ride you. And then, you know, with Isaiah and Sanaya, uh, we just, you know, have stressed, you know, we're going we're gonna to put you in situations where you can make plays. And dang, they made plays. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. So, um, Wes, Isaiah scored 25 in the second half against Stanford and then 21 in the first half. So what do you need to do to get her to score <laughs> 20 in each Oh, half? are you kidding me? You're going to go there? All right, here I go again. Uh, yeah, my fault, y'all. No. Uh, you know, it's funny because then River Baldwin kind of took over in, in the fourth quarter there and – and so I just think it's a matter of the matchups and who's hot. And, uh, you know, again, Isaiah was coming off the big second half against Stanford, and, and that probably gave her a lot of confidence. She probably really likes this arena. I know I do. And uh, so, you know, again, uh, but obviously the other team knows she scored 20-something, whatever, in the first half. And so I'm sure they made adjustments and tried to make it a little bit harder on her. Tim Booth from the AP. Um, Wes, you do know that the Final Four is here in six years, so if you hang around long enough, you might get a chance to come back to it. Um, pre-game, were you just in your pre-game prep when you got word about what was going on with the floor and then kind of what was the yeah. what happened from there? Yeah, I wish I hadn't have known, to be honest with you. Uh, but like I said, it was a tough call because you know it is a little bit of difference, but you're also, like I said, looking at over an hour – delay before they could get here. You're also losing probably the ABC window. Uh, that's a big deal to be on ABC. You know, we've been fortunate to be on it a couple of times the last couple of years, but uh, it's a big deal. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think players are used to shooting pretty far behind the line anyway. And so uh, just – yeah, but definitely it did take you out of your routine a little bit. And, you know, I was kind of late being where I was supposed to be with the players and all. But uh, it worked out. So everything's good. Brenna, Brenna Green, Coin6 here in Portland. Um, just, I guess, on that same topic, just how disappointing was it for you to be having to deal with a situation like that and having yeah. a court that wasn't right going into it? Yeah. Game? I, didn't, I couldn't go there. You know, I had to worry about the game. And uh, like I said, I was worried about if our players were going to have to wait an hour to play. Uh, I like the fact we could jump out there and play the game. And, uh, again, I don't think it affected the game, the outcome. Both teams played on it for a half. If it would have gone overtime, we might have a complaint. But as it was, it was equal for both teams. And, you know, these kids have handled different stuff all year. So, hey, they're good. Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com, change, change uh, courts halfway through overtime if that had happened. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sure you'd want to celebrate right now and, and not think about South Carolina, but any first thoughts and kind of the challenge of taking on an undefeated team and does yeah. having played a home-and-home home with them not that long ago but right. with entirely different rosters help at all in the prep? Yeah, I mean, again, it gives you a little bit of confidence. You know, uh, we were able to split with them and um, – you know, they're a great, great team, obviously the best team in the country, but you're you're not playing a four out of seven series. You're playing one game, okay? So we just got to find a way to win one game against them, and it's going to be a big challenge. Uh, obviously, I've seen them on TV quite a bit. I'm sure when I get on that plane in a little while, I'll 
probably exhale for a minute or two, but we got a pretty long flight. So at some point, I'll be watching them and uh, trying to get ready. But hey, right now, you know, you could tell me we're playing the Trailblazers and I feel okay. We're in the Final Four. Bring them on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Clyde Drexler. Bring him back. Bill Walton. Bill Walton. So you want the all-time Blazers against NC State? Yeah, what the, against okay. South Carolina. It might be good. <laughs> Give Lloyd Neal a call and let's talk. Go ahead. Uh, Ernie Myers, Ernie. Pack Sports Ready. I, Coach, I know I said I wasn't going to ask you a question. You were going to ask him playing, but you talk about freshmen, you know, and you have two good freshmen that you play and that you have trust in. Talk about uh, Matty Cox and Zoe Brooks yeah. um, coming off the bench um, yeah. as a freshman in the way yeah. she played in this tournament. Yeah, you know, amazing. Of course, we knew Zoe was really good coming out of high school. You know, I look at our stat sheet, even with Isaiah going off and – and with River having an unbelievable fourth quarter, we got five people in double figures. And that's what's been, I think, our strength all year long. Uh, so Zoe makes a big difference when she can come in and, and provide us. I mean, that gives you three, three guards that can really get downhill, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, and then Maddie Cox, she's from Texas. So I'm sure this was kind of special for her. Um, but, I, you know, all our freshmen, I. Again, we've kind of tightened our rotation up, but it's a good group, and if hopefully they'll be patient and and be ready when their time comes. Austin White, uh, Portland Tribune, uh, Coach. You know, obviously this town and this venue is going to be hosting a Final Four in 2030. I'm just curious if you have any overall thoughts on you know the arena, the, you know the town hosting you, yeah, just how you yeah, kind of. I loved it. it. You know, I hadn't been here in a long time. Uh, I came out here and did a home visit with Coach Yao. So that tells you that was in the mid-90s. And uh, I flew out on a red eye, visited the kid at school, did a home visit, and took a red eye back out. I guess I flew out early in the morning, and then I took a red out that night. Uh, so pretty brutal. But, uh, no, everybody's been unbelievable. Obviously, we're fortunate enough to have uh, police escorts. Those guys were awesome. Uh, the hotel, the arena Everyone here has been so hospitable and gone out of their way to, to take care of us and make it. So I, I do think uh, definitely this would be a great place for it. Um, you know, I, again, I know there's a lot of questions about the two sites, you know, over instead of four sites. But, uh, you know, I love Portland. Uh, yesterday I was able to get out and walk a little bit to go grab me something to eat. And uh, it's, it's a great place. So I'm, I'm all for it. Kevin, we probably make this our last question. Uh, Kevin Pelton, ESPN.com. Just got to follow up. Who, who was the player you were recruiting? <laughs> you know what? It's horrible. I don't remember. <laughs> hey, y'all, when they don't come, they didn't come. <laughs> so they kind of become a tramp at that point, and I forget about them, okay? <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. But no. Uh, <laughs> no. Maybe that wasn't the word I should have used. But anyway. Uh, I, I really don't remember where she ended up going. She didn't come to NC State, though, and I'm sure she had a great career. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations, and best of luck in the Final Four. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have, a, have a good flight. Thank you. We're going home. Thank you very much. Thank you.